Hello everyone, today is Saturday and today we are talking about tea myths. We've had five days this week already talking about tea myths, so they've listed lots of the really, really common ones and I'm not going to repeat that because there are a lot of social and emotional and sexual sexuality myths that are involved with people taking testosterone, but the stuff that I'm going to cover is all like the health risks and not everything you hear about how bad it is, is is true. Like with anything you take, there are risks, but there are myths. Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, but I did get this information from very reliable sources and from doctors, so I'm, I'm right but I don't sue me or something. But first I will say that I will get to birthdays, but I'm gonna put it at the end. And since this video is going to be very medical, I realize that it might be boring for some, and since I haven't, you know, stripped for a while, since that is like my trademark move, I figured, you know, that might happen at some point in this video, so. I'm just trying to hook you so you know the real, the facts about hormone replacement therapy. First, I know there are a lot of people who are very, you know, scared of, you know, injections and shot and the needle and, you know, any complication that could come with that. It's a fucking tiny needle. If you do intramuscular, it's bigger, but still, you know, it's not a big deal. It really doesn't hurt. Ask anyone. It doesn't hurt. But that's not the myth that I wanted to talk about. The myth that I wanted to talk about is in regard to air bubbles, injecting air bubbles. Ask most people in the street what happens if you inject an air bubble. <gasps> you die. It's not. It's not true. There are so many myths associated with that belief that you will die from air bubbles with testosterone injection. First of all, Testosterone is injected one of two ways if you're a trans man. Intramuscular, which is into the muscle, or subcutaneous, which is into the fat. With both of these options, you are not injecting into a vein, and that is where the, the whole, like, death by air bubble comes from, is injecting into a vein, which you're not doing. So naturally, the first thing I did when I was uh, getting my first injection, talking to the doctor about all the shit that goes along with it, I was like, so, you know, how about those air bubbles? Am I gonna kill myself accidentally? Like, what's going on? And she, she like, stretched her arms out, like, I don't even know if this is in the shop, but she was like, you'd have to inject, like, this much to, like, cause an actual problem, you might not even die from that. No, you're gonna have to blow yourself up like a balloon to actually kill yourself from subcutaneous or intramuscular air bubble injection. The only problem with air bubbles and injections like this is that it's gonna fuck up your dosage. If you have, like, half of your injection and an air bubble, and that's what you've measured it to be, then you're not going to get the full dose of testosterone. But I mean, if you're, you know, paying attention at all, you're not going to inject any sort of big air bubble that's even going to make a difference. Of course, if you want to do it right, get all the air bubbles out, you don't want air bubbles. Uh, normally I don't see this with subcutaneous, but intramuscular people, sometimes they uh, do aspiration, or they aspirate, which is where they pull back to check to see if they've accidentally, um, poked into a blood vessel or something. And so this would be where you'd have to be concerned about air bubbles. But wait, you still don't have to be really that concerned about air bubbles. You don't want to inject into that spot, so of course, move it if you have hit a vein. But to kill yourself by air bubbles into a vein, there's a lot of different resources that will tell you different things. There's no exact amount of an air bubble that will kill you in a vein. And like I said, you shouldn't be injecting into a vein, but you know, just in case you're worried and you're paranoid, like what if I accidentally inject into a vein? The dosage of air that they say would kill you would be about 20 milliliters, that's about 20 cc's. Um, this this whole thing, this is one milliliter, so I'd have to do 20 of those into a vein, which I'm not even doing anyway, to kill me. A lot less can do a lot of damage, but, you know, this, that's 20 times this much, so... And you're never going to inject this much tea, let alone this much of air, so you're, you're, you're never gonna have to worry about dying. Like, don't worry about dying from injecting, unless you, like, poke yourself in the... You can, you can poke yourself in the eye with this and it's not even gonna cause a problem, like, that, that would cause a problem, but it won't kill you. Basically, this isn't ever gonna kill you. This is not gonna kill you. That's what I'm trying to say. Myth, injecting, you cannot kill yourself with air bubbles, or in general, really, unless you get really violent with this thing. Look at how big that is. That's... no. The second myth is the, the big other health concern, the big C word, cancer. You think you're gonna get cancer from taking testosterone for a long time. That's why people get hysterectomies, you know, they want to reduce cancer risk, blah blah blah, because testosterone is what causes it, right? wrong. There is no evidence that testosterone use, prolonged or short term or whatever, will increase your risk of cancer just based on the fact that you're using testosterone. But the reason that people say that people who are on testosterone are at more of a risk of ovarian cancer are because, you know, these people are generally trans men who are very uncomfortable with these parts and they're not going to feel comfortable getting tested and checked out. Your pap smears and, and physicals and stuff, they don't like that shit. So, you know, I don't like that shit. But the thing is, that, that's why you're at a higher risk. It's not a testosterone thing, it's that, you know, especially when you're on testosterone, you're passing as male, you know, you're gonna get weird looks from doctors, there are cases where treatment will be denied, and that is why cancer is more risky, because the thing is, when you're on testosterone, it doesn't, it doesn't take away your risk of cancer, so you have a, generally the same risk of uh, ovarian cancer as a female. The thing is, they're more likely to get checked up on, and you're less likely. And, and, and other statistics contribute to this cancer thing as well. Trans men are apparently more likely to smoke, which increases your risk of cancers. 
they have a higher BMI, body mass index, which increases your risk of some cancers. These are just statistics. It has nothing to do with really testosterone, although it's correlated to testosterone use. But testosterone itself does not increase your risk of cancer. If you take testosterone and then start smoking and drink a lot of alcohol and gain a lot of weight and do all these things, and like I said, with any drug, any any you take for anything there's always going to be risk there's risk with testosterone just like there are risks with anything else but cancer is not one of them killing yourself via air bubbles is not one of them yeah so birthdays birthdays i think i think we can do birthdays so for every birthday i will remove an article of clothing does that sound acceptable to everyone first we have frederick he turned 21 today i think this saturday so happy birthday to him next we have nearly nathan who turned 23 at some point during the last week nathan happy birthday Next up we have Casey Jordan who turned 18, and 18 is such a good year that you get my pants. Oh, do we have, do we have another birthday? Do we have another birthday? It looks like we do have one more birthday, Skylar Emery Eagle. He turned some age on a 420, so uh, 420, that, that wasn't within the last week. I guess, uh, I guess that, that doesn't count. See you next Saturday. Also, I got like three complaints last week about talking too fast, and I don't think I talked really much slower this week, so I'm sorry, but I just, my, the words just come out of my mouth. What can you do? You can talk slower. That's probably what I should do. Anyway, that's, goodbye, goodbye.